So um, I picked this up off of eBay and it is new in the bag. It's a sealed bag. So it's brand new old stock from like 1979. And uh, uh, they were on eBay and I bought two of them for 15 bucks each. Um, and so, yeah, let me, let me show you why I bought them. Uh, I'm going to leave this one sealed in the bag. All right. It's, it's, it's uh, two boards, uh, but I've got one over here that I've already been playing with. So yeah, let me move the camera a bit and then I'll show you what's going on here. All right, so uh, there's a main uh, digital board and then an analog board that goes up on top. And uh, uh, let's remove the, uh, the analog board. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. Uh, but let's look at the digital board here, okay? Now, uh, I've been futzing with it a bit, so I figured out how to get uh, five volts into it. I figured out where that goes. And it will run on five volts because even though it is a microprocessor back from the 1979 days, the 8080 microprocessor required, I think, 5 volts and plus or minus 12 volts, or, or was it 5 volts plus 12 and minus 5? It, it, it was something strange. It required three voltages, I remember. And then the 8085 came out, and the reason it was 8085, that 5 at the end meant it was a 5-volt part. You only needed 5 volts to run it. And uh, so this one has an 8085 back here on a socket, nice, nice big ceramic part. But it's got, it's got a, it's a complete um, uh, single board computer 8085 designed. Okay, so it has address and, and data demultiplexing. It's done with an 8212, classic. Um, it's got some I.O. It's got um, uh, an 8155 and an 8155. Uh, those are uh, parts that are pretty fancy. They have, um, move down here. Uh, so these are both 8155s. So they have uh, 256 bytes of RAM. So there's no other RAM in it. The only RAM available is on these two chips. So there's 512 <laughs> in two different places. Um, and then there's, uh, these also have a parallel ports, two parallel ports, I think, and then a timer. So those are kind of, kind of strange chips. You don't, didn't see people use a lot of those. This is an 8279. This is a keyboard display driver. So it, it multiplexes keyboards or displays or both. And that's what this connector here is. This goes off to the display keyboard. All right. And um, then it has a, an 8251 over here, which is a serial, a serial port. Now I think the serial port is only used for debugging um, off this connector here. I don't think that's actually used in the product, but I could be wrong. Um, so uh, another cool thing about the part is uh, the clock. <laughs> okay, it comes with this really fancy 10, 10 megahertz uh, crystal oven. Um, so that's worth the $15 price of admission right from the get-go. So I know well, I was going to lose my money. Um, I had this nice uh, 10 megahertz oscillator. Now that 10 megahertz oscillator gets divided by two and runs the microprocessor at five megahertz. Now, so you might be saying, well, wh why would they spend so much money to run a, a digital processor? Well, they're not. This is a uh, navigational navigation system, okay? And uh, let's see if we can, we can see it right here. I think you can probably read that. It's the Navtech Corp, uh, N-A-V-T-E-C. This is in from uh, New Hampshire, um, Nashua, uh, New Hampshire. Um, yeah, 1979. I don't think there was GPS around. Um, so it had to be some type of other navigation. Now, I think this might be for uh, maritime navigation. Not sure about that. Very little. I could find very little about this company. Um, but it says uh, processor front panel control. That is this section here. Over here it says um, synchronizer. Uh, there's a synchronizer over here. Now the synchronizer, all I can figure out is there's a whole bunch of 7485s, which are a 4-bit comparator. And there are uh, one, two, three, three, four, five, six, six of those. So 
four times six bits wide comparator. I don't know, it's a synchronizer. And then uh, this section up here is marked uh, sampler. I don't know what's going on there, but there's some counters and other things. Now, this section here seems to be attached to the, uh, to the analog card. The analog card, uh, let's see if I can set it down here so I don't jockey it around here. Okay, so the analog card um, seems to have one connector marked antenna and another connector marked SAT, S-A-T. So maybe that's satellite? Maybe there's some else, something else going on? I don't know. Like I said, I don't think GPS is around there, but I might be wrong. Um, and uh, so it looks as though there's a bunch of input uh, transformers to transform the impedance, and then it goes into an amplifier, and then there are some filters. There's, there's a Pi network here, a, a CLC, and these are just inductors. Um, every single transistor that is in a can, TO, TO92 can, is a 2N221, 2221. So uh, the 2222 baby's brother. Uh, and yeah, then some 3906s on there as well. But not a lot of fancy things going on here. Just a, I think this is basically just amplifier and maybe a comparator, a digitizer or something like that over here. Not quite sure. There are some things uh, that are marked. This is marked, uh, let's see, R10, R73. Yeah, they don't say what they actually do. This this is marked hard limiter. So hard limiter, I yeah, I don't know if it's a, uh, you know, clipping circuit or something. Uh, again, it says Navtech Corp. This is the TRF board, the TRF. So radio frequency, the I don't know. Uh, this is notch filter to, on this connector here. So I, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, it does plug on to the big board. Am I going to zoom out? Uh, there's a connector here. So there's a, a board to board connector here, uh, seven pins, and that can just kind of flop on here and put it on. All right. So that's, that's interesting. Um, so what I did was I, um, there was one, uh, ROM location. So th there's two ROMs and they seem to be masked ROMs. So they're, 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 they're not even programmable. They're just, they're made, they're made in the factory to have the program in it. And there's a, a increment. So these come as a pair. And then there was a separate one that was an option. So I, I, I put in a header here so I could put in a, uh, a logic analyzer to take a look at, uh, take a look at what's going on here. Okay. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and look to see if anything happens. Um, when I turn the power on, uh, the bottom, the bottom here shows the five megahertz clock. Okay. So let's do that again. So when I turn the power on, I get the five megahertz clock and then nothing happens. And then suddenly, boom, uh, it wakes up and it seems to be, uh, it seems to be actually executing. So what I have here is eight, the eight data lines and the read write lines and uh, just seeing if I could decode anything and made any sense, but uh, uh, it just, it's just working. All I know, is, all I know is it works. So the whole, the whole board seems to be okay. So uh, what to do with the board? Um, I don't think it's very useful in its present form, unfortunately. So I thought what I might do as a project is um, go ahead and remove all of the components, all of the, all the nice components on here, and then design my own board and build a little single board computer uh, that uh, has a serial interface. We'll just operate it with a terminal emulator but we'll have, uh, we'll have a bunch of stuff and I'll probably add a Ram. Um, so a ROM and a Ram and then all the other parts that come with it, go ahead and reuse those. Um, well, $14, I think it's a, it's a good way to buy a complement of, uh, of 80, 85 parts cheaply. And, uh, yeah, they're all the vintage ceramic ones. These are dated 1977. The processor is dated 1976. Um, 
Now this is the oldest board. This board is a little bit newer and this board comes with NEC parts. The 8279, the 8155 are actually NEC parts on this. It's still ceramic, but NEC parts here. And then the other ones are still Intel parts. Um, so yeah, interesting stuff. Um, normally I would say I would try to repurpose the board, but I don't have schematics. And even if I had schematics, I don't think these two sections of the board are very useful. Um, and so I think the best thing to do is to uh, 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 desolder all the parts and make myself a little single board computer and uh, have fun with that.